All right, so when they record notes 39 over introduction to limiting reagents or limiting reactants, we won't go past an introduction. So this really will be all we learned about limiting reactants, what we do today. And there's one more thing and then we're done with this unit. So we are coming to a close. So this first example up here is not going right into how to set up your limiting reactant problem. It's more of like explaining what a limiting reactant is um, using more like an example that's more relatable than like our compounds we use in chemistry. So this first example says one hamburger, HB, and notice it is here, one hamburger is our end result HB, is made up of two all beef patties. So the all ABP is two all beef patties. So this is obviously a, a double patty hamburger. Um, two sesame seed buns, so one from the top and bottom. So we have those two sesame seed buns, SSB, four pickles, doesn't matter if you like pickles or not in our example, they're gonna put four pickles on and one packet of ketchup. So you have one ketchup, okay? So all those things combined, two APP, two SSB, four P and one K equals one HB, one hamburger. So if you have 20 all beef patties, 50 pickles, 10 ketchup packets, 16 sesame seed buns, how many hamburgers can you make? And this goes into what a limiting reactant is. It's basically, it's asking, well, if I have to have all of those things, I have to add two of this, two of this, more of this, one of this, one, to create just one. And I want it, like to make my full hamburger the way that I make it. Let's say this is my restaurant and I always make hamburgers like this. So I have to have all those ingredients or I can't make a burger. Okay. So it's saying if I only have these ingredients, which one of those am I going to run out of first? Because whatever one I run out of first, well, that is what is going to limit the amount of burgers I can make. Because if let's say I run out of buns, well, even if I have more meat, I have more pickles. I still can't put it on a bun, so I still can't make a full, a full burger. So whichever one I run out of first is going to determine how many hamburgers I can actually make. So how do I figure this out? Well, initially, you look at their numbers of how many you need right here in the front, and you divide by them. So if I have 20 all these patties, and I need two each time. Well, if I divide by two, that gives me 10. I can make 10 burgers. If I have 50 pickles, so I take 50 and I divide by four, that'd be 25, right? Or is it 20? What am I talking about? Oh my goodness. It's definitely not four. <laughs> That's what it was divided by. So I don't know where I even got that number. Let's just use a calculator. That's what we do. 50 divided by four is 12.5, okay. So I can make 12.5 burgers. So right now I have more ability to make burgers with pickles than I do with my all beef patties. So right now the, the most burgers I can make is 10. We keep going, 10 ketchup packets, okay. Well, it's a one in front of the ketchup, so it's divided by one, so I can make 10 still. So I'm still at, I can make 10. And lastly, we have 16 sesame seed buns. I need two of each time, so 16 divided by two is eight. And there we go, there's our lowest number. So the one I'm gonna run out of first is buns. I'm gonna run out of buns, so then I can't make my full burger. Um, so how many burgers can be made is eight. Whichever one you run out of first is determines how many I can actually make fully. So what is the limiting reagent? It's the one ingredient that limits the number of burgers you can make. So it's what limited me, it's why I can only make eight. So it'd be the sesame seed bun, okay? So as we move into today's lesson, your biggest requirement is just to understand what a limiting reactant is versus an excess reactant or a limiting reagent versus excess reagent. What I think should have been pretty clear by that little example that we'll read the definition. So the limiting reactant is the reactant in the chemical reaction which limits or determines the amount of product I can make. So whichever one I run out of first is going to stop me from making any more. My excess reactant, so my excess one, is the one I, that is, I have in present in quantities that are, oops, that are more than enough for my limiting reactant. So I'm gonna have leftovers, is basically what this is saying. Is I'm gonna have leftovers of my excess reactant, I'm gonna have plenty to complete all of my limiting, and the limiting reactant is the one I run out of first. So it is the one I run out of first. So it determines how many I can actually make, so I'm gonna be out of it even if I have extra of everything else. 
If I only had eight buns, then I'm making eight verbs. That's it, okay? So now, how do I do that in chemistry terms, in these chemical reactions? So the point is if I'm going into a lab and I have my balanced chemical equation, as you can see here, 2Na plus Cl2 equals NaCl. So my goal is to make NaCl, which is salt, regular table salt. Then I want to make sure that I put the right amount in of sodium and the right amount of chlorine to make the product that I want to make. If I put too little of chlorine in there, well, even if I have leftover sodium, I'm still not going to have enough to make the amount of salt that I have wanted. So you have to make sure you're putting in the right amount. And remember, just because I put in five grams of one and five grams of the other doesn't mean they'll be equal. Some things weigh more than others. If I look at the periodic table, chlorine is 35.45 grams for a mole of it. Whereas Na, sodium, is 22.99. So they are not equal in mass. So if I weigh out the same amount of them, I'm going to run out of one of them faster, the one that has the higher atomic mass. So you, they, you can't just assume that since you're weighing out the same amount that it's actually just going to work out equally. It's not going to work like that unless they have the same mass, which they don't because they're different substances. All right, so how do we do this? Basically, your first step is to get your two examples. So get your two reactants, or however many reactants you have, in this case it's two, into moles. So you're gonna go from grams to mole. And then I'm gonna see whichever one I have less of, that's what I'm gonna run out of first. So right now I have five grams of sodium and I have five grams of chlorine, and I wanna know which one is going to limit me in making more product. So I'm going to start with five grams of sodium. I mean, yeah, just sodium. And then I'm going to have five grams of Cl2 as well. So basically you set up two problems. They're always going to be one steppers and you just get it into moles. So multiply by one line, multiply by one line in my fractions, and I'm going to convert it from grams to moles. Now this same math step is the stuff that we've been doing for weeks. If grams is what I'm starting with, then grams is what's going to go on the bottom. The same thing here. Grams is what I'm starting with, so grams is going to go on the bottom. Now, I just told you your goal is to get it into moles. Okay, so I want to go from grams to moles and compare the numbers together. So if I want to get it into moles, as a one-step problem, well, mole obviously has to go on top. Like that. Now, back to our conversions from stoichiometry just a couple days ago and into the mole unit. Both of those things being true, the number that went with mole in a mole to gram conversion is one. So when it's mole to gram, the number that goes with, one, with mole is always one. And the grams, remember the grams is always molar mass, which I have to get in the periodic table. So I'm going to look at sodium, and it is 22.99. That's its molar mass. Okay, so this one is Cl2, though. So there are two chlorines. So when I look at the mass of chlorine in the periodic table, it's 35.45. But there's two of them. So I'm going to take 35.45 and I'm going to multiply by 2. And that's going to be the number that is the molar mass of, of SCL2. So 35.45 times 2. And I get 70.9. And there we go. Now I'm just going to divide these. So I'm going to get my answers to these and see which number is lower, almost. It's not completely true, but let's, let's show you what happens. All right, so I have 5 times 1, which is still 5, and then I divide that by 22.99. And I get 0.21, and we'll say it's going to round up, we'll just do it to two decimal places, so it'd be rounded to 0.22, and that'd be mole of Na. Now to the second problem, so I take 5 and I divide it by 70.9, and you get 0 0.07 mole of Cl2. Okay, so I did that. I did my first step, I got it into moles. Second step is divide your answer by the coefficient in the balanced equation. 
Okay, so remember those are these numbers, the numbers that are in front of them in the balanced equation. I need to divide by, because technically this is saying I need two moles of this. This is saying I only need one. So I really need more in this equation to make my reaction work, and I have to account for that. So I'm going to divide sodium by two. I'm going to divide chlorine by one, which means I really don't have to enter it. I know the answer is going to be 0.07 mole of Cl2 still. For this one, though, 0.22 divided by 2, 0.22 divided by 2 equals 0.11 mole of Na. So I'm going to write the answer because I got all this stuff going on in a different color. There we go. 0.11 mole of Na. And now all you got to do is look at it. And which one do I have less of? That's the one I'm going to So it's this one. Cl2. So when I answer this, the question here, this is my limiting reactant. I'm going to put LR. This is the one I'm going to end up having excess of. So I'm going to put ER. And there you go. ER, excess reactant. LR, limiting reactant. Done deal. There you go. Let's practice this one more time. I'm going to leave up my rules over here. I'm going to add the last rule I kind of just stated. forgot it might be a good idea to have actually written it. So the last rule, where are you? Where are you? There you go. So the last rule is just the lowest number is your limiting reagent. Okay? Is your limiting reagent. All right, so let's do it one more time. So again, I have 100 grams of acetylene. Now remember, this is oxygen, this is carbon dioxide, this is H2O, so this must be acetylene. So I have 100 grams of this and 100 grams of oxygen, which would be this one, oxygen by itself. So I have those two. I'm not even going to really look at these two because they're not mentioned in the question, so I can just kind of ignore their presence. Now, if you opened your notes earlier this week and they say leaders here, we're not doing liters in regular chem, and I forgot to change that to grams. So pre AP um, has to learn how to convert it into liters. We're not going to do that. So I just change it up to grams. So if your notes say grams, I mean, if your notes say liters, just change it to grams. Just make a little note on it that we're doing grams instead of liters. All right. So same thing as before. I'm going to start with 100 grams of C2H2. I'm going to start with 100 grams of O2. I'm going to start with my two reactants and just see which one I write on first. It's going to be a one-step problem. That's my, my number one step right here. It says I'm going to get my reactants into moles. So I have grams right now. I want to get them to moles. Whatever unit is here must go on the bottom. So I start with grams on the bottom. My goal is to get it into moles. So obviously that's just going to go on top. Whatever I want my answer to be in at the end is to go on top in my formula. The number that has been going with mole when moles of gram problems is one. The number that goes with grams is molar mass. So the molar mass of oxygen would be 16 times 2 because one oxygen is 16, there's two oxygens, so it would be 32 grams. The molar mass of C2H2, it's going to take me a second, carbon is 12.01. 12.01 times 2, because there's two of them. And then I'm going to add to that 1.01 for hydrogen, but also times 2, because there's two of them. So the total molar mass would be 26.04. Okay, so now that is all set up. We're just going to put this in the calculator. 100 divided by 26.04. And I get 3.84 moles of C2H2. The next one, I have 100 divided by 32, and I get 3.13 moles of O2. Now, remember your last step, or a second, really second, then you just pick the lowest number, though. The second step where I have to do math is divide your answer by the coefficients. So for O2, that number is 5. I'm going to divide by 5. For C2H2, that number is 2. Okay? Now, this one's going to be where my answer comes in. I'm going to change color. So, 3.8 divided by 4, right? Yes. So, 3.84 divided by 2 is 
nine two mole of C two H two. That's how much moles I would have of it if I had started with hundred grams. Then I have three point one three divided by five, and I get 0.63 moles of O2. If I start with 100 grams of oxygen, I'd only have 0.63 moles used. So the one I'm gonna run out of first is oxygen. I'm gonna have leftovers of, of acetylene. I'm not gonna have enough oxygen to make any more. So this will be my limiting reactant, oxygen, and this will be my excess reactant. The one I have leftovers of at the end. And there you go. That is the process. That's what we're doing today. Just limiting reactants.